Hi, and welcome to episode 64. Am I going to get it right this time? Episode 64 of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Andrea. I am also known as the Cat Lady. That's C-A-T-T, craft all the things. So welcome. So not every two weeks quite, but every three weeks. That's not too bad. At least it's somewhat regular. Um, I wanted to record last week, but of course things came up, so I didn't. But here I am. I'm back. I got a few things to share. A few uh, pretty exciting things. And... Yeah, but that'll probably be pretty short. I don't have a ton of new things on the needles or anything, so let's jump right in. Thank you to all my returning viewers, and if you're new, uh, thanks for checking me out. Hope you like what you see. I am mainly fiber podcasts, yarn, anything yarn-related, fiber-related, spinning, knitting, crochet. Um, I feel like the springtime, I always really get into the spinning again, so that's kind of where I am again. But I always have something on the needles, so... Um, not much going on and uh, there's no podcast news really uh, again me and Jen from the Uncreative Crafter we still need to get together to figure out what we're going to do for our little giveaway we have uh, a DPN holder and trying to figure out some other stuff to uh, go with that I still have to send her her stuff too because <laughs> I'm terrible at mailing things um, so keep keep posted for that and we'll jump, jump right into knitting so I only have one thing to show, but it's, it's a big thing. I'm still working on my Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry, so I'm trying to remember when I cast it on. I don't recall. It was not far after the whole release of the pattern. I said, oh, maybe I'll do it, but I kind of joked I don't have the pattern, so I'm not going to do it, but then someone purchased me the pattern, so I'm like, okay, well, I have to do it, so it's kind of a little bit of peer pressure there, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I did it. Or I'm doing it and I'm like this close to being finished and of course I'm in the middle of a row so oh well um, I held you know you saw the beast last time I recorded and I was not on the final color yet but I think I was I don't remember where I was and I forgot to mark it so I'm I'm a very unorganized podcaster these days but I'll get back into it. But anywho, so last you saw, I was somewhere in the in this color here, which is funny. It kind of looks looks stripy, which this was hand spun. I'm not super duper thrilled with the color. It's definitely not my favorite color of the of the project, but uh, I don't, it, it fits. It's you know, it fades well from the blue. So this was the blue here, and then it faded into this grayish. There's kind of bits of blue in it, bits of pink, bits of green. And then my final color is this kind of tonal pink. It's got like pinks and golds in it. So this, so let's go through. I'll show you all the yarns real quick. Um, they're all listed on my Ravelry page, but we have uh, Knit Picks, Stroll, the so nitpick something in like why well, I think it was called wine tasting, and then that goes into a JK swatches, and it was like a dyer's choice. I, I got it as a D stash, and then we got went into then these all these three colors like literally fade like because they're like total it's total gradient looking, but then this one is. Polly Orange and she's overseas and I got that from one of those Instagram get your wishes granted and uh, I think it was called grape or black grape or something and then it goes into that this is the first color that actually shows that cool striping uh, this is happy little dye pot who sent me a skein as a gift and also I used one for a giveaway and I think it was called like rain Again, I think I have, I should have all the names and everything on Ravelry. Then it goes into, and since I picked, I picked up the blues from that, I went into blue. And this was all stash. I was just kind of, this is a definite stash buster. Stash, stash buster. I'm sorry, I'm cutting off my head. I'm trying to get the camera right, but anyways. So then it goes into the blue, which is Lorna's Laces in the denim color. And then we move into our, my hand spun, which was Fiber Addiction. Uh, Meet Virginia was the, was the braid, and which, uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting, it, that one spun up, 
you know, it was a very grayish blade, braid with lots of colorful neonish splotches and it just kind of turned out very great. And it spun kind of thin, so I think this is more of a light fingering, so it definitely is going to be a little airier in that section, but that's okay. And then our final color is um, Fiber Story in I think Blossom was the name of the colorway and this is a, just a sock yarn. So that, that one's turning out pretty. So thing is huge. I don't know where I'm going to block it. I got all these ends to weave. But by the time I record next this will be complete because oh and I totally screwed up. I screwed up a lot of places especially in this uh, hand spun section. I screwed up in the lace section. I kept coming up with the wrong stitch count. I'd have too many then I'd have two last so I and I kind of would just make adjustments as needed. So now I'm at the end and you know it's supposed to be a, num a certain number of rows. Well I have to add more because somehow I screwed up and the way it needs to end I need to end at a certain spot here. So just gonna keep going until I'm there. So I have about, let's see, I think I have one, two, three, four, I'm at like six more rows maybe? Six or seven and then bind off. So so close. <laughs> so this is the paid board pattern on Ravelry. Find your fade by Andrea Mowry or you know Drea Renee Knits or something like that. Um, it's all over the place. I'm sure you've heard of it. So, and this is living in my brandy bag. Still, it's like getting big for that too. It's such a huge shawl. And my kitty cat bag. And this has my, been my go everywhere project, which is probably why it's got a lot of mistakes in it because uh, some of the, I, you really need to concentrate, especially in the lace sections, it's really hard, easy to just kind of screw up. So, but I just want to get it done. So I've been taking it everywhere. That's it for knitting. I'm hoping to cast on a pair of socks soon. Um, Cause I haven't worked on a pair of socks since February. So I'd like to get socks going and I, after this big massive thing is done, I'm going to get back to my other big massive shawl, the Exploration Station. So hopefully I can pull that out and get moving on that. Hopefully I can figure out, I'm pretty sure I left off in a spot that's, I can determine where I left off, I hope. <laughs> Cause I mean each little, there's like a little bunch of wedges that are all different colors. So I'm hoping I stopped at a good spot. I'm sure I can figure it out. So on to spinning, uh, I am going to take you on a little tour to talk about some spinning. I'm trying to think if there's anything, no, all my spinning stuff is down in the lair in my basement. So just hold for one moment and we will go take a tour of the basement. Okay, we are in the basement and I'm gonna do the uh, kind of toury camera <laughs> instead of the front facing just so you can see so for Mother's Day I got a really special present and I'm very excited so I got a drum cutter so this is a brother drum carter it's the standard I think it's 90 TPI which is regarding the teeth on the drum. Uh, it's supposed to do a, supposed to be kind of more of a multi-purpose. It can do fine, like fine wools as well as like medium to coarser wools. It just depends on how many times you have to run it through the carter. And some wools in general just aren't made to be carded. Like I'd, I think, unless you have like a super duper extra fine carter, I think, but like Cormo and Merino, I think it's, are supposed to generally be combed because they just, they're delicate and they break easy. I don't know, I'm learning as you go, but things like the Romney I've purchased and the BFL I've purchased in the past, that they can go through the carter. So I will show you, I made a tiny sample of the BFL. So here is one, there's my very first bat and it's like a half an ounce or almost an ounce. Yeah, I think it's only like a half an ounce, but it's nice and smooth and fluffy very soft, it's like a pillow. So I actually was thinking of trying to dye this just to kind of experiment with dyeing a bat since I've never dyed a bat. Oh, and here's my second 
Mother's Day present, a set of Valkyrie Extra Fine wool combs. So if you recall from last summer, I think it was, I made my own wool combs. And yeah, they're rough. They work for more coarser wools. Um, you know, I've run some fine wools on there and, and they're okay, a lot of waste. So I'm, I got my very own extra fine combs now. So again, these can be used, I did a lot of research on different message boards and stuff, and these can be used for any, any kind of wool. So fine wools and coarse wools, it just, you know, you might get a little more waste with the coarser wools or might be a little bit more work involved. I'm not really sure, but supposedly those ones are kind of multi-purpose and Valkyrie is a, supposed to be a pretty trusted brand. Um, I did have some issues. I ordered them and did not hear a word for like two weeks and then all of a sudden they showed up. You know, all of a sudden I got a shipping notice that they were coming. Um, brother was very fast in shipping. However, I got my unit and there was a crack in the frame. So here's the old frame. So what they did is they just sent me a new frame. They sent me a new frame right away and all I had to do was undo all these screws and transfer to the new frame. But yeah, there's a big crack in the wood. So, I mean, again, it was more, it was just aesthetic really. I mean, this thing was still functional. The drums were fine. It was just, the frame was cracked, but you know, you pay a lot of, that thing wasn't cheap. So I wanted it to be, wanted it to be nice. So that's what I got. So and this is my table. This actually was a table that I used to have in my bedroom for my craft table. I currently have no table up there, so it's kind of a weird setup going on upstairs, but this is now my spinning table, I guess. So I didn't grab my list, but I was going to show you some, uh, it's kind of stashed, but it's spinning related, so I'm just going to go into it. So I purchased a three pounds of Romney from Wooly Farms, and it's a semi-local. I mean, they're in Michigan, but they're not necessarily, like, close. And she was selling it on a Facebook group I got called Dirty Fleece Done Dirt Cheap, which is, I love the name. Okay, it's an ACDC reference to a song, so that was pretty hilarious. So I've already, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen some of the processes I've done. Here's some of the clean, kind of, this was kind of just the, I separated all the locks, but, you know, there was always, there's always, like, just a, Kind of a nest left. Uh, so there's the nest, and I'm trying to. Oh, and here's where I'm storing all the washed. So here's my washed blocks, and yeah, they got these yellow tips, but after uh, you kind of comb them out, they're not that noticeable. It just kind of blends in with the color. So this is about two pounds there, and then. And here's the final pound that is already dry. I just need to put it away. But you know, it came with this this last batch had some shorter bits and darker. So different part of the sheep, I'm sure. And yeah, this is where I am drying. And here's kind of my washing setup. So this is what I've left. So I have like, you know quarter of a pound maybe and not even left um, and I got to rewash this because it's awful sticky so this was Formo I combed and kind of dizzed myself last last year and again it was my first experience with any of this and it's okay but now that I revisit it and yeah, I tried to put some in the drum carter and yeah I mean it came out okay but it's just kind of sticky still and yeah, this was all the waste that came off of it. So something, yeah, I gotta, I'm gonna rewash all that, see what we have left. Um, but yeah, look how brown and disgusting this looks. And then it comes out that pretty silvery gray. It's amazing, but to see the transformation. So here's my washing bucket. Here's my sink. I've been using all these leftover litter box bins, which have been amazing to fill the, fill it with water, dump it in the bin, put the lid on. Let it soak, do its thing, rinse, and then I bring it over here and lay it to dry. And yeah, there's my gloves and my baskets. So afterwards, I made myself a sample. And here's a sample of the Lester Longwool. 
uh, I showed off last week, which was the white. And it's, you know, it's, it's soft. It is pretty soft. I don't know if it's skin, I don't know if it's like neck soft. I think I would probably be okay with it. I'm not too bothered by too much scratchy, so I could probably wear it. Uh, it's definitely fuzzy, uh, but I flicked these with a comb and spun it real quick on my wheel. Maybe if I prepped the fiber differently, it would be different. And then same with this. This is the gray Romney, so this is the stuff I just showed you. And yeah, this turned out really nice. Again, it's really fuzzy, but again, they're very long. And But this one I did on the spindle. Again, I flicked the locks out and then just did it on the spindle. So again, it was very haphazard and, you know. I mean, it came out pretty even, but uh, I'd like to try to eliminate some of the fuzzing. I think that's not, I don't, I think it's just the quality of, or the nature of a long wool. But uh, if I can get a little less fuzzy, like this one is actually less fuzzy than that one, I think. But they're both... About the same softness, but I'd like to make, since I have three pounds of this, I'd like to make a cardigan or something, and I'd like to keep it in the natural gray color. But I made my second bat, so here is the same material. So this I just, like I said, I spun from Flick Locks, but so I decided to make a bat. So I made a bat, and I'm going to put this on the wheel, and it's super it's nice and soft and fluffy. And this is about a little under an ounce, so, and that, and, and I could fit a ton more on there, so I could at least get two two and a half ounces probably. I mean, definitely two ounces. I think a two ounce is a pretty standard size bat. So, um, so yeah, that was my second bat. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna spin it yet, but, but yeah, those yellow tips just blend in there real nice. So it gives it a kind of a, I don't know, you can't even tell. It just looks like a nice, nice gray. And then for my final bit of spinning, new slash stash, Again, on the Dirty D, dirty Fleece Done Dirt Cheap site, someone local, which like drivable local, was offering up like full full fleeces of her sheep. She uh, just, I guess, didn't have the time to deal with them this year. So she had like 20 of them. I got with her, was supposed to go get one, and then it fell through. Like we couldn't make it up there, and then she sold them all. And so I was a little bummed, and that's when I ended up getting the three pounds of this. Uh, and had it shipped because it was still pretty cheap. Then she came back like a, later that week and said, oh, a couple fell through. I have a white and a natural. And I said, oh, I'd love to give them a hold on a white one. And back and forth, back and forth, we just figured out a time and place to meet. And I got myself a giant bag, which I should have opened first, of Romney. So um, all this is Romney and it just, this just coincidence, I guess. But I couldn't pass it up. It was $25 for this bag of dirty fleece. <laughs> so there it is. But it's white. You know, it looks like there's a lot of short, little short bits in there to go through. And this one, this one, oop. this one's going to take a while to go through, I'm sure. But, sorry. Um, but I'm excited to go through it. And it's a it's a giant bag, and it was twenty five dollars, so it's, it was worth it. Oh, okay. So I apologize for the weird camera stuff, but uh, that is that is the tour of my spinning, and that is what I've been up to for spinning, mainly fiber processing. Uh, and I have a lot of work to do ahead of me, so I'll meet you back upstairs. Okay, welcome back to the living room. Thanks for uh, dealing with my little crazy tour of my spinning. And let me make sure I talked about everything. So I talked about my stuff that I got, my wash stuff, ready my samples. Yeah, that was it. So I'm to crochet. No new, nothing new on the hook right now, but I finished my awesome breast forms that I was working on last time. So this is my second crochet order. These are size D's. And so these are breast forms for, uh, you know, surgery, mastectomy, patients, whatever, or any kind of person that has an issue with uh, needing breast surgery or whatever, needing some prosthetics, that's the word. <laughs> so this is using Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. Again, the website's awesome breast form, <clears throat> awesomebreastforms.org. If you want to volunteer, you can sign up. If you need these, you can sign up. Everything's 100% free for the recipients. So... I'm responsible for buying the yarn, shipping them out, etc. 
Um, but yeah, Hobby Lobby, I love this cotton, size G, size G? I didn't write it down. Um, I still don't have this listed on Ravelry, I gotta update it, but. So I, last, I saw, last you saw, I think I had like half of one done. Um, and then I finished it and I measured it and it was too big. It just and it looked wonky, it just didn't look right. And it turned out like double D <laughs> and it was just big. So I, I frogged it and frogged it back as far as I needed to and then redid it. And then did the second one, so these gotta go out today. Um, and that's all I got. I'd like to make some more dish dishcloths. I like the crochet, the dishcloths, the kind of the flowery ones, or I'd actually like to learn how to do like doilies. I think that would be cool, but I don't know. Right now I don't have any crochet plans. Um, sewing, nothing going on with sewing. I don't have any table, so using my sewing machine is pretty much hard because <laughs> it's on the floor. Uh, and then, so on the stash. So this, we're, we're flying through. So stash, I forgot to show off last time, some old stash, basically, uh, I don't know if it was beginning of the year sometime, uh, there was more, uh, there was like another fleecy sale, nitpicks or whatever, so I got the chickadee color, I got two of these, and I'm going to make socks for Jim out of these, and they actually had two kind of mannish colors, and I missed the other one because I waited too long to order, but I got two skeins of the chickadee. And then I got Dark Side, which I'm guessing is a Pink Floyd reference, kind of looks like a prism, Dark Side of the Moon. I'm going to say it is because I like Pink Floyd. And then I got Unicorn, which this doesn't really remind me of Unicorn, but it's got a lot of purple in it. I like purple, purple-y pinks, so. so I got two of each of those for socks. And of course, I still have tons of other Felici, so I gotta start the socks. And I really do love Felici socks. After I start, when I start making them, I love the stripes, I love the softness, so I should just make a bunch of Felici socks. And then, showed you my Romney. Uh, from, uh, oh, I bought this, this was a definite weird win purchase, but this is, this is Red Heart Irresistible bulky yarn but I bought this not for the yarn particularly it's called clam is the colorway I was going to see if I could spin it so I took apart so it's two giant chunks wrapped together so technically you know you got two but I started to draft it out and I don't know I could maybe I could probably make a funky yarn out of it because it, I mean it drafts out okay so I thought about doing that. I thought about, you know, I got, it comes in two long pieces so I could do two bobbins and then ply them together and see what it looks like. So that was my thought. I was going to use my eel wheel, so I got a, t a million spinning projects to do, but so I don't know. I don't know if I'll do that or not. I could try a spindle too, but I feel like it'd be easier on the wheel. So there's that. Kind of a weird, weird project. And again, it's it's acrylic. It's not wool or anything, so... Oh, it's 10% wool. 90% acrylic, 10% wool. But it's, it's pretty soft. I've heard of people doing things like this, so I kind of wanted to try it. So that probably won't be for a while, though. i got plenty of other things ahead of that. Uh, okay, so Mother's Day, I got some presents. So we went to went to Frankenmuth for... Sorry, my hair is just really bad today. Went to Frankenmuth for my daughter's birthday, so Emily turned 7. Uh, a couple weeks ago and we took a family trip to Frankenmuth which is Michigan's little Bavaria it's kind of a Germany German themed town um, but they have two hotels there that have splash like water parks indoor water parks so we picked the one we wanted to go to which is Zenders Zenders Splash Village and it, with the package we got we got to uh, we got a breakfast buffet one for the morning and then we got a family style chicken dinner which that's why you go to Frankenmuth you go and get the family style chicken dinner typically we like to eat at the Bavarian Inn which is the, the family split at some point it's like you know family feud and so the, and the Zender it's the Zender's family so Zender's restaurant was I think there I don't know which one was first but there's Zender's and then there's the Bavarian Inn food is the chicken is the same 
The sides are mostly the same. Some of the appetizer-y stuff is different at each restaurant. And we are a Bavarian in family. But the Splash Village at Zender's was the better looking splash place. So we ended up there and we get the Zender's chicken dinner, which of, of course it still was good. Um, but anyways, right next to Zender's is a yarn shop. And it's very, it's like a yarn and gift shop. So it's like 80% gift shop, 20% yarn. <laughs> so they have a, like a yarn corner in the back, but it's fun, it's called Rapunzel's. Been in there, you know, I was, we always stop in there whenever we're in Frankenmuth because I want to look at the yarn. And since uh, it was the week before Mother's Day, I said, hey, uh, you guys can pick me out a Mother's Day present. Or I think Jim might have brought it up. I think he mentioned it. So I, he's like, can you, okay. He's like, well, why don't you point at a direction for the kids to pick out? So I pointed at a shelf that I knew had a lot of like sock yarn and stuff. And then I just went away and they picked me out some yarn. Um, so Emily picked me out. And Jim's like, you picked the expensive yarn, which it wasn't really intentional, but that's okay. This is a uh, dream in color, smooshy, with cashmere, which I don't have a lot of experience with MCN, so it's very exciting. In the My Fair Lady colorway, 70% superwash, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. But how pretty is that? And my girl must know me because it's got a lot of purple in it. And Oh, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. I'm excited to use this. I'm not sure what I'm going to make out of it. Probably a shawl. I don't know if I can find another color to go with it make a bigger shawl, but I like this. This is good. So that was from Emily. And when she made me a card. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Surprise. What's that on there? And then Emily to mom. And she just put a fun, some stickers and pictures on there. So I got all of the handmade cards. And at school, she made me this. So she came home with this little clay keychain. Oh, there's the back. Just got our initials on it. Like a th th thumb print or fingerprint on there. So uh, she asked me to put it on my keychain. I did for a day, but I'm a little worried it's going to break because I put my keys just bang around all the time. So took it off there. I need to find someplace special for it. And David also picked out a very fun yarn. Picked out the opal in the sweetie color. And like, how awesome is that? So this will be a great pair of socks. So that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty cool, cool yarn. And I've never, I've never knit with opal yarn either. So both of these are new to me yarns. So that's cool. I mean, it feels like any other rugged sock yarn really. This one doesn't feel soft. It feels sturdy, but I think that'll be fine. And then David made me a card <laughs> with some creepy face on it and a heart. And then I think Emily either helped him or I think he wrote that, but surprise. I think, oh, Jim probably helped him. And you can't really see what's on the back either or something. I can't really tell what it is either. David, okay, his name's on there. And something. <laughs> he's getting there. Emily's obviously a little bit better at the drawing, but he's getting there. Then my husband, which was really kind of amusing. So the night before Mother's Day, we discussed man, we really should do a puzzle again. We used to do the puzzles. I'd like to, you know, we'd like to share a hobby because I was kind of joking. I need to teach you how to spin so that we can spin together, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm like, man, why don't we do a puzzle? We haven't done a puzzle in a while. He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, apparently he had already ordered a puzzle and had it shipped to work for my Mother's Day present. So this is, and we had talked about these before, the Stained Art Jigsaw Puzzle, and it's, they're, they're, in, they're made in Japan. So this is the Disney themed stained art, stained glass puzzle, thousand pieces. The pieces are tiny, but they're all see-through. They're like stained glass looking. So when the puzzle's done, you can kind of, we might try to frame it and you can hang it in the window. So it's like stained glass. But yeah, it's gonna be, we've got the border on there already and we're starting to work on a couple little patches. We haven't spent a lot of time on it yet, but uh, 
This is gonna be a tricky one, yeah, for sure. But they have a lot, the, they had a catalog with a bunch of the puzzles and yeah, it'll be fun. So that's something for us to do together. And that was all for Stash. I guess I can talk about this real quick since it's a, an acquirement, but. So I was at the store grocery shopping Wednesday, something. And I always like to look through the nail section, the nail like nail polish and stuff, and because I've been thinking I should do my nails again, you know, I have some jamborees I like to do sometimes, but everything just takes so long. And regular nail polish chips, I don't have time to sit around and wait for it to dry. So I, so I grabbed this. Impress Press On Manicure. Okay, so Press On Nails. Like, seriously, who wears Press On Nails? One Step Gel. So they're gel Press On Nails. I'm like, okay. Patented, super hold adhesive, no glue needed. So there's the box. Of course, there was the tips were in here, and there they are. Now, when you look at them super close, they look like fake nails. <laughs> but again, what doesn't? Like when someone gets acrylic nails, you know, they look fake. But I mean, they look fake. But the, man, they're on. They are on. These press-on nails. I mean, I've I've used other like press-on French tips before for like a wedding, and like, yeah, they're like peeling off by the end of the night. These things are on. So this. Patent, 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 I can't say that word again. Super hold adhesive is really the real deal. So yeah, these are not coming off without pulling off my finger. Um, I'm not sure how to get them off. It says hassle-free removal, but I'm not really sure. I read them, it said, it said like, it said kind of like peel and use some nail polish remover, but I don't know, I'm a little afraid to take them off. Um, the only downside is the adhesive kind of goes up on the nail a little high, so my the inside of my nails look a little dingy because stuff is sticking to the glue. <laughs> but these have been on since Wednesday. Took literally like a minute to put on. And they came with those cute little, you know, accent nails. And it was $6, and there's a whole other set in here. There's 30 nails, so there's definitely enough for me to do this again. Um, obviously the sizing is always an issue. I have bigger nails. This said it was the oval edition, so I don't know if that means they were bigger, but they looked bigger than some of the other ones. Um, yeah, I would do these again. Why not? So, better than spending, you know, 20 bucks, or whatever it is for uh, a gel manicure. I can take three dollars, technically. Um, so yeah. But Jim's like, they look like fake nails. I'm like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. I like them. And that's all I got for Stash. So, life in review, weeks in review. So, I got a story to tell. The day I re recorded last two weeks, three weeks ago, it was three weeks ago from Thursday. I'm uploading and getting everything ready to go and I get a phone call from David's school. David was in school full time that week because I was painting and trying to get some things done. Um, I get a phone call from school. David is fine but he fell and he hurt himself and he might need to go to doc the doctor. What? So I j I'm, Emily was just about to get off the bus, so I had to wait for her to get off the bus. I threw her in the car. We zoom over to the, the daycare. Yeah, he has a big gash on his right above his nose and right above his eye. And they're bleeding a lot, and they have them all kind of, you know, they're laying with him and got his face covered and cleaned up and whatever, but by the time I got there. David, what happened? I fell on a stick. He fell on a stick. Okay, and nobody saw what happened. He was at like the farthest end of the playground. He was on this deck area and he fell. Basically he fell. He probably fell and hit the deck somewhere. and Or fell on a stick. I don't know. But he fell. He gashed two spots on his face. He was fine by the time we left the, the daycare. I mean he was in good spirits and everything. But of course I'm freaking out and we have to go to the ER. Or should we go to the urgent care? I don't know. Is he going to need stitches? He might need stitches. Call Jim, frantic. He's like, okay, I'm on my way, just tell me where you're going. So we ended up going to the ER, which was the same ER we went to when he split his top of his lip open. Uh, we ended up in the same room we were in when he split his lip open. Um, so we went there, did all that. So of course we didn't get home till super late. We went out to eat after 
got ice cream, you know, did the whole shebang, but he's fine. I'll put into a couple pictures of uh, the damage. It's still healing. It's gonna obviously gonna leave scars, but he's totally fine. But yeah, that was not fun. So that was partially why my podcast didn't get uploaded until the next day. Um, I'm trying to remember. I might have posted something on I probably posted it on Instagram. I get confused on what I post and not post and whatever, but I probably posted it on Instagram. I'm sure I did. But yeah, just add to the stress of life. Uh, Emily received her green belt in karate last week, so that was exciting. Uh, so she's enjoying the leadership class. I'm not enjoying the schedule because the class is later. It ends at, it's like 5.15 to 6.15. Usually, you know, we were home before 6. We were home and I'd have dinner on the table by 6 because that's when Jim gets home from work. So now I don't get home until like 6.30, you know, like 6.40. I think we come home at 6.45 the other day because by the time we get uh, the class ends at 6 15 but half the time it doesn't end until 6 25 or whatever because they just carry on and then she's got to get her shoes on and then we got to drive and you know there's traffic blah 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 so that's just been a little bit hectic um but you know it is what it is we're trying to do the best we can and she needs to be in this class because this is the only way she's gonna keep keep growing and learning more in the karate so um, I've been going to my class still. I'm going to test for my purple belt next Friday. I'm ready. I know it. I know all the stuff I could have tested last month, but I don't like testing. It's stressful. You're on the spot. You you know, it's just, it's just not, it's not a fun thing. <laughs> Emily doesn't like it either. I don't like it, but you know, it is what it is. I'm pretty sure I'll pass. And then hopefully I can catch up to Emily soon because she really... I, she needs somebody to kind of go over things with her, and I don't know the stuff anymore. I was kind of keeping up with her, and now I'm behind. So she's learning green belt stuff. I still don't know purple belt stuff all the way, so uh, it'd be nice to be able to help her. Mother's Day uh, went okay. Kids were kind of jerky most of the day, so which it's kind of a bummer. I was kind of bummed out. You know, it's like I'm supposed to want to spend time with my kids on Mother's Day, right? Yeah, I did not want to spend time with my kids. Jim was a saint though. He picked up bagels from Panera and got me some iced coffee from Starbucks. So I got to sleep in a little bit. I didn't sleep in much, but I got up a little bit and had my coffee and bagels and then my presents. Um, but then, yeah, the rest of the day, which it was a nice day, but we just didn't know really what to do. We kind of just chilled out and we tried to play outside a little bit, but the kids were just jerks. <laughs> um, Overall, I'm still kind of overwhelmed with the house stuff. The house is a mess. We still got home improvement stuff. We've had an ongoing crap going on with the deck. So the deck has been done since October, but then something was wrong with the inspection. So then it took them a month to come back and fix that. And then it was just inspected again yesterday and it's wrong still. So then they're like, okay, and I don't know when they're gonna come back. I'm just going to strangle them. So. And we got other stuff to finish. We got to finish painting the basement. We got to fix the kitchen floor. I love having a house, but I hate having a house. I kind of wish we rented a house. I mean, it's a waste of money, sort of, but God, you don't have to deal with any of that crap. And I went to kickboxing last night. So when, so you know, I'm, I'm always at karate and I'm at the studio like constantly. Okay, so I'm there Tuesday nights. Emily's there Wednesday and Thursday. So like, I'm there all the time so of course I've gotten and I've, we've been there for three years now so it's like I, I know the owners and everything and everyone's very nice but the owner the owners run the kickboxing and he's like you know if you ever want to show up you know you know you don't have to sign up or pay or anything for the kickboxing if you just want to come on you know obviously we're invested in their business so yeah it's kind of like you know just show up when you can if you want well of course I never showed up to anything. He's like, oh, are you coming? I said, yeah, I'll come, I promise. You know, and then suddenly something would come up and I didn't go. And finally, last night, Jim, Jim's like, I'm gonna get on the rowing machine. I really need to work out. I'm like, well, maybe I'll go to kickboxing. He's like, yeah, you should go, you should go. So I'm like, I really didn't want to, but I went, whew, and boy, did it kick my butt. So it felt good, I actually. And to be honest, I, stay, I stayed up a little later last night and I, I'm not like exhausted today. Like yesterday, I was just like so tired. And I was just, I took, I tried to take a nap because I was so tired and I kind of took half of a nap and it's like, you just feel so tired. I feel 
better today. So I mean, I just I know this I know this is what I need to do. It's just doing it kind of sucks. I'm not really it's not really fun. It's a little fun, but not fun. You know, it's kind of fun when it's over. Uh, and it it was killing me. So I got to one point in the sequence, and I like couldn't breathe very well. Like you, I couldn't take that deep breath I kind of would stop short and I was like okay calm down don't panic because it'll make it worse you know I put my arms up for a minute I took a drink of water and then it was fine but it was like yeah my body is my body's hurting um I don't feel I feel a little sore you know my arms are a little sore um but the the class runs Monday Wednesday Friday no Monday Wednesday Thursday I go to karate on Tuesday, so I'm not gonna go every night. I thought I told myself in my head maybe I'll do Tuesday karate, Thursday kickboxing. Um, so then we'll see. Maybe I'll throw in a Wednesday here and there, but that's only going for two more weeks. Then. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just hit it hard for the last two weeks. We're still trying to get together the basement for our workout area, so we ordered some foam foam tiles for the floor. I'm gonna set up my punching bag. Jim's gonna put his rowing machine down there. We thought about getting a TV in there or something. So. Once that's set up, we'll have a space. Hopefully that'll help too, so. All right, I think I've rambled enough. I hope everyone's having a good week, weeks. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, we don't have a, we don't have too much going on this weekend. Jim's cousin offered to watch the kids Saturday while we go out to dinner, so that'll be fun. And Sunday, we're probably gonna clean because the house is a mess. I might go out with a girlfriend tonight, so that'll be fun, but we haven't firmed up any plans, so I don't know. Other than that, uh, that's it. I'm gonna finish my fade today. Hopefully weave in the end and maybe get it blocked by the evening. That would be great. Of course, I'll post pictures on Instagram. Again, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'll get the show notes up on Ravelry. And one day I'll revisit my blog. But yeah, my blog's been pretty much dead. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good week. I hope you get to craft all the things. And I will see you next time. Bye.